Happy to be leaving? <laughs> oh. Damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> 50 pounds? <laughs> I got here with it. Push it harder. <laughs> Shove it hard. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? Today, Stephanie is going back to Tampa. We're here to train uh, glutes. And what I'll do is I'll overlay the clips like I usually do with the informative voiceover. I'm gonna find the parking first, which is proving to be very difficult for some reason. Oh, I know, but you're averse to the snow, so you won't pick it up. Oh, that's so cool! My last day in Canada, I make a snowball. You got your ring. You gotta hit my butt though. Your butt? Yeah. Oh, I flipped over. Oh! I'ma put that pussy in some rain for you. I'ma pop a tennis for that air for you. I'ma play that just like a cast for you. I'ma bleed red when I go smash on you. Suddenly, cut for me. Hey, baby. I see fire. Yeah, fire, baby. This is what your butt looks like. Your actual butt looks something more like this, but this is what an illustrated version of your butt looks like. So the glutes are composed of three main muscles, the glute maximus, the smaller glute medius, and the smaller still glute minimus. While the glute medius is an important stabilizer of the hip joint and is a strong hip abductor, I'll be focusing primarily on the glute maximus since it's the largest and the most superficial or close to the surface. The glutes have a bunch of different origins, including the pelvis, sacrum, coccyx, and some fascia around the lumbar spine. They insert on the upper femur and IT band. And because the glutes have so many different attachment points, they can perform a lot of different functions, with the main ones being hip extension, hip external rotation, hip transverse abduction, and posterior pelvic tilt. Posterior pelvic tilt. And because the glutes can do so much different stuff, I think it's important to train them with a variety of different movements to maximally stimulate them for growth. So this is an example of what a good glute workout would look like. Uh, you'd start with some kind of pre-activation movement, and I think this is a good idea for any muscle you're trying to focus on, but particularly important for the glutes, because in my experience, people can oftentimes have a difficult time finding a mind-muscle connection with them. Using a circular band can be a good way to open up the hips and get the glutes firing through active hip abduction during a few light or bodyweight squats. Doing a couple lightweight high rep sets on the abduction machine can work for this purpose as well. It may be my powerlifter bias coming through, but I think that squats are a staple to be included in any program if you can safely perform them. With that said, there are a few reasons why I believe the squats are actually overrated as a glute builder. The first is biomechanical. Warrell et al. in 2001 showed that the glutes fire the hardest when they're in or near full hip extension, and squats load the glutes largely when they're not near full hip extension. Keep this in mind for later. A ton of studies have shown the squat to be way better at activating the quads than the glutes, and a study by Contreras et al. published in 2015 showed that the hip thrust resulted in more glute activation than the squat. And while we're on the topic, I'll quickly comment on squat depth. Contrary to popular belief, deep squats actually don't lead to increased glute activation. A 2002 study by Caterisano et al. did in fact show this to be the case, but there was a methodological flaw. They didn't change the weight on the bar across the varying squat depths. So of course, using the exact same weight for an ass to grass squat will yield more glute activation than a half squat, but that's only because it's harder to go all the way down. You simply aren't able to move as much weight when you go twice as deep. But when you account for differences in strength between the varying squat depths by assigning a relative rather than absolute load, these differences go away, as shown by Contreras et al. in their 2016 paper. So with that in mind, there are three things that you can do to make the squat more glute focused. Point your toes out since external rotation increases glute activation, take a wider stance as demonstrated by Pauli et al. in their 2009 study, and sitting back or keeping the shins more vertical, sort of like you would on a Smith machine squat, which multiple studies have shown to increase glute activation. Remember from earlier that the glutes fire the most when in or near full hip extension. Since the hip thrust transfers the most force to the glutes when the glutes are near full hip extension, they make a lot of sense biomechanically as a glute builder. They're also way better at activating the glutes than squats are at least according to that Contreras study. A common complaint about the hip thrust is the painful iron-on-bone contact of the barbell and the pelvis. I found that some thick pads can be of comfort here, but performing them single-legged and for higher reps is a relatively easy workaround. 
When I do them this way, I just lay a plate on my lap and focus on strict control and a strong glute squeeze at the top of each rep. You also get the advantage of having to stabilize during hip extension, which I imagine might yield more glute medius activity and perhaps engage areas of the glutes that the barbell variation may not. I also find I can get a better mind-muscle connection when I do these unilaterally. Because the glutes also posteriorly tilt the pelvis, I think you should try to maintain a posterior pelvic tilt throughout the entire range of motion. Glute activation can be maximized in the walking lunge by doing a few things. First, doing forward walking lunges instead of reverse, taking larger or longer strides, minimizing the contribution of your back leg by driving your front heel into the floor. While a lot of people think of this movement as a lower back exercise, and it can be, it's also a very effective glute builder. Uh, there are a few things that you can do to make it more glute focused, slightly bend your knees, slightly flare your feet out, slightly round your lower back, and squeeze your glutes hard at the top of each rep. And finally, I like to finish where I start, which is with hip abduction. And I like to include this as more of a so-called burnout exercise at the end of a session to assist with any extra little bit of metabolic stress. And these can also be done for high, say 20 or 30 rep sets on the abduction machine with your butt elevated or using a cable or using a plate as Stephanie's doing here. So that's it for the glute workout, guys. Please smash the thumbs up button if you like the informative voiceover uh, or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Everyone. I just wanted to quickly say thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate all of your guys' support on the last video. I was surprised that that video was as well received as it was for just a travel vlog, given that you guys seem to like that one. I will be posting another one, so my next video will cover my trip to the LA Fit Expo. What I'm trying to do here with this channel is produce the highest quality, most informative content that I possibly can. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, please feel free to share the video. That's always very much appreciated. Also, we're closing in on 100,000 subscribers, uh, which is just crazy for me to think about. About. Um, so if you guys would like to help me reach that goal, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so by clicking this button right here and you'll subscribe to the channel. Even just simply liking the video is a great way to support me. Um, so if you haven't done that, please go down and hit the thumbs up button now. Really appreciate it. Um, and that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next video.